This clip demonstrates how to prepare and record inventory counts in priority. It covers the following actions. Preparing and printing inventory count documents. After the physical count, recording counted quantities in the system. Refreshing count documents with updated calculated quantities. Reviewing variance between calculated and counted quantities and approving the count. And calculating past balances, which freeze inventory levels in the past and thus prevent retroactive revisions. It is strongly recommended that you avoid recording inventory transactions in the warehouses being counted from the time you refresh the count until the approval of quantities, so as to prevent errors. And of course, make sure that inventory is not moved from or into these warehouses at that time. The first step is to run the program that prepares inventory count documents. Each such document displays the calculated quantities of all items in the warehouse, which will later be compared to the quantities actually counted. There are two such preparation programs, one that prepares a quick count, and another that takes pass balances into account. To prepare the initial count documents before the physical count, use the quick count from the inventory, warehouse control, inventory count, prepare count for today quick menu. But if yours is a manufacturing company and includes plant floor warehouses, use the other program from the prepare count for past date menu. In this demonstration, we'll prepare a quick count, but the same instructions apply when preparing the count for a past date. In the program input screen, designate the warehouses to be counted. To prepare the count for more than one warehouse, press F6 and retrieve the warehouses in the warehouses form. Then return to the program by pressing Escape. The magnifying glass icon indicates that the retrieved warehouses are saved for the purpose of running the program. Flag the Include Zero Balances column to include items in the printed count form with a calculated quantity of zero. This way, if there are actual quantities of these items in the warehouse, the people performing the count won't forget to include them and will have a line on which to record amounts. Flag the Select Parts option if you plan to count inventory for selected items only. In this case, the second input screen opens in which to select the desired items. Please note that an inventory count will not be recorded for warehouses flagged in the external control column of the warehouse's form, for parts that are defined as not in use or for parts that are not subject to inventory control. Once the program finishes, you will receive a message with the number of the inventory count documents opened. A separate document is open for each warehouse. Let's enter the inventory count form and retrieve by today's date to see the documents that were opened by the program. These documents all have a draft status. The items themselves are displayed in the itemized inventory count sub-level form. In the calculated quantity factory column, you can see the amount calculated by the system based on the inventory transactions recorded for each part. After running the preparation program, you can print the counting forms from the Inventory Count Reports menu by selecting Print Inventory Count Form. In the Document column, record the number of the Inventory Count document created by the preparation program. If several documents were created, press F6 to retrieve them from the Inventory Count Form by date. In the program input screen, select the desired options. Choose whether or not to display calculated quantities in the printed forms. We recommend that you don't display these amounts as they do not necessarily match actual inventory levels in the warehouse and might accidentally bias results. Choose lines between rows to add grid lines that make it easier to fill out the form. And add blank lines at the end so that there will be room to record additional items that do not appear in the form. The people performing the physical count should record amounts for loose items in the quantity column and amounts for packaged items in the crate code and number of crates columns. After all forms have been completed, you can record counted quantities in the system. 
To record the counted amounts, return to the inventory count form, to the new count documents, and move to the itemized inventory count sublevel form. You can record the amount in either the counted quantity columns, in factory units, or in buy sell units. Or if the items are packaged, record the code and number of packing crates. The system will automatically convert the crates into units based on crate definitions. If a significant period has elapsed between the time the preparation program was run and counted quantities were recorded in the system, it is recommended that you recalculate inventory amounts in the system so that any inventory transactions that took place in the interim will be taken into account. From the Prepare Count for Past Date menu, run the Prepare for Recount program. In the Program Input screen, record the number of the original inventory count document and the date of the actual count. The result is a new inventory count document in which calculated quantities have been updated for the end of the workday selected during program input. The quantities recorded from the physical count are copied from the original document into the new document. Unapproved lines are deleted from the original document which receives a final status. Let's return to the inventory count form and retrieve one of the new documents using the original count document column, where we record the number of the original document. At this stage, you should examine the variance between calculated and counted amounts in the variance factory column. To approve the amounts recorded for the physical count, flag the approved counted quantity column for each approved line. When you approve a line, an inventory transaction is recorded for the variance between the calculated amount and the actual counted amount. In addition, the inventory balance of the item is revised and inventory valuations are recalculated based on counted quantities. If you want to automatically approve all lines in the document, you can run the Approve Inventory Count program from the list of direct activations. Leave the including zero quantities column blank if you want to approve only those lines with a counted quantity greater than zero. When you are finished approving the count, change the status of the document to final. Note that inventory levels are updated regardless of the document status, immediately upon approval of individual count lines. By changing the document status to final, you prevent users from making revisions to it. Now let's open the audit trail form from the inventory transactions menu and retrieve the inventory transactions created during the count. The easiest way is to retrieve by the count document number in the document invoice number column. In this line, for example, the quantity is negative. In the same line of the inventory count document, you can see that the calculated quantity is 6 and the counted quantity is 3, so that the amount recorded in the inventory transaction, the variance between them, is 3. This variance is added to the calculated balance in the system, so that inventory levels of the item match the actual amount in stock. Various inventory count reports, located in the Inventory, Warehouse Control, Inventory Count, Inventory Count Reports menu, provide a useful tool for keeping track of inventory levels. For instance, the Uncounted Parts in Period report displays items which haven't been counted within a specified time period. The Count Discrepancies report displays a list of items for which calculated and counted quantities do not match, as well as the monetary value of the variance. For cases in which inventory balances do not match expected results based on the physical count, you can read instructions for correcting quantities in an FAQ on the topic. Right-click the Warehouse Control menu and select Online Help. In the browser window that opens, click on the question, The balance in an inventory report differs from the recorded counted quantity. At the end of the process, once you are sure the inventory balances are correct, it is recommended that you run the program that calculates past balances. This program locks inventory balances up to a selected date. In other words, 
After running the program, no one can record an inventory transaction prior to the passed balance date. That way you can always be sure that inventory levels are accurate up to that date. To calculate the value of the inventory saved in the last balance, run the costing for past balance date program. In the commercial package, run this program from the Financials, Cost Analysis for Businesses, Part Costing menu. From the same menu, you can open the Inventory Valuation Reports menu and run a variety of reports on the value of your inventory. In the Manufacturing package, the same actions can be performed from the Cost Analysis for Manufacturers menu. This concludes our demonstration of how to perform an inventory count. For additional assistance, run the inventory count wizard.